Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. As I continue to work through the ABRSM Grade 6 Music Theory Workbook, my lessons now move on to Question 1A, Exercise 9, in which we are required to allocate chord choices to a given melody. And here we have a children's song in a major key. And in this lesson, I explain all of the rules of harmony that you need to understand to properly allocate the correct chord choices. The full lesson can be found on my Patreon channel if you visit patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill you'll find the full lesson there and you can find links to this lesson in the cards and in the description box below. Sample examples of this lesson will follow on after this short little video to show you how I work through the exercise bar by bar note by note. Everything that you need to fully understand the rules of harmony that we imply as we allocate chord choices can be found in my Harmony and Composition textbook. This is available from Amazon and you can find the links to this in the cards and in the description box below. Everything you need to know can easily and quickly be found via my website. If you visit www.sharonbill.com, you'll find it all right there. Enjoy your studies. Bye. If you find that your chords are seeming rather abstract, chances are it's because you've got the wrong key. So first of all, let's just um, map out our chord choices because we're going to need to allocate chords to accompany this little melody line here. So let's uh, just outline our choices, our options. So we'll put the whole lot down but it's best for the most part to stick to the primary triads. There'll be a couple of exceptions to that, sometimes a chord two, sometimes maybe a chord six or a seven B or something like that, but mostly the primary triads, chords one and four and five are our main choice. So one, two, three, four, five, so which of these notes are going to be harmony notes? Well, the accent is on the first beat of the bar and then the main beats. And so that's the harmony note. That's just a passing note leading to the next harmony note. Passing note leading to the next harmony note. So we have here E, G sharp, B. We just have a plain good old chord five. And so here we have an A and then here we have an E that we are implying. Now here that's a fifth, A, C, E, that's a fifth and then here we have A to C which is a third so the fifth is now gone, it's become a third and then here we have E, G, B so we're okay because it's that fifth has sort of gone here so there are no consecutive fifths however here E to E will give us an octave, so we just need to be careful what we do here. Here we have the classic passing 6-4. If you see notes 1, 2, 3 in the melody line, we want to have a um, contrary motion stepwise in the bass, and 1B, 5C, 1 is the prescribed progression for this passing 6-4 here and then that will get rid of our consecutive octave problem as well. Now let's move on to the next bit. So we have a lead in to the next section here. Now we could choose all sorts of different chords. You could think well chord 1 again or you could think 1B and then here you could think, well, that's a D, so we could go to chord four again. And then that's a C, so we could go back to chord one. And then here that's a B, that could be chord five. And so long as they don't create consecutives, that, that would be fine. However, there's a nice little opportunity here because we have this E, da da, D, da da, C, da da, B. We have this nice little descending sequence and if we can shadow that in the bass line, so long as it's not creating consecutives, we of course don't want stepwise consecutive fifths or octaves, but so long as it's not creating consecutives, um, that would work quite nicely. And so I'm going to suggest one B here, which implies a C. 
and then this D, instead of jumping to a chord four, I'm just going to break the mold a little bit here and use a seven B. which gives us a B in the bass, because then I'm continuing that stepwise movement, just shadowing that descending sequence by step. Now 7B, if you look at the notes of 7B, or chord 7 generally, it's a G-sharp B, D, it's very similar to what would be a 5, 7 E, G-sharp B, D. So we can see just without the root, it does sound quite like chord five, although there's no root, of course. It's, it, it does sound quite similar. There's a lot of notes in common there, though. We restrict its use to 7B, though, because we don't want to duplicate the root, which is the leading note. So we avoid using that leading note because we don't want to double that either. And so sev seven is always best restricted to uh, first inversion. However, that's been observed. And then here, we can go to chord one. 